Hi Floss Tubers and welcome to uh, Floss Tube video number 62. <laughs> to double check. Um, hope you've all been well. Hope you've all had a wonderful Easter. It's been a really busy month around here. I had my son's birthday. Obviously I had Easter as well. Um, I worked a public holiday. I worked a weekend. Um, and it just was an ordinary month for me. I, I had a major focus on one of my projects because it had to be finished um, in the month of April. And um, yeah, so got a lot to show, got a lot to talk about. Um, so I had two new starts this past month, uh, two finishes, one small and one very big and exciting finish for me. And uh, I have a few new products that I've purchased that I want to show you because I'm going to incorporate them as new starts in the month of May, hopefully. And um, right at the end, I have some very exciting news for me that I'd like to share with you all. And some of you might be interested in hearing what that is. So we will get to that when we get to it. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with my first finish for the month, which was also a new start for the month. So it's a Biscornu. Now that you know how I'm just like addicted to doing Biscornus at the moment. So uh, this is it here. This is called, um, I have to double check, Asta Biscornu. Now I purchased this design off of Etsy. I've got my overhead lamp on, so I'm just hoping that that will help show things a little bit better. Um, so the seller on Etsy for this is called Sunshine Cross Stitch and I stitched this on 14 count white Ada. So this is my travel project when I go um, babysit on Tuesdays and it's just nice just to have something little that I can take with me and um, just easy to stitch. So this is the front and this is the back. I just really like the colours in this one. Um, this particular seller on Etsy has a lot of floral biscornu, so if that's your thing, please go check her out because she's got some beautiful stuff, um, full directions and, and everything on there. So there are the two together, so that should look really nice. So I've got two finished biscornus now that I need to really pull my finger out and fully finish. So hopefully the month of May will see me finish those and fingers crossed that I can show them on the next video. Um, I also just, sorry, uh, stitched these two over one um, on Ada, obviously. And that was my finish number four for 2023. Okay, uh, next we've got a Christmas house number one on Artisi or up on the rooftop Tilt and Crafts. Um, I've mentioned this lots of times, but anyway, it's known by two names. I still like to call it up on the rooftop. I'll put in a picture of what it looked like last time you saw it. And this is what I've done. I didn't get a lot done. Um, two days stitching, total of 848 stitches. But the exciting part is Santa is here. Santa has arrived. So I was very excited to see him there. So I really hope to progress. This one's, um, you know, as I said, I only got two day stitching done, but I did, um, this one is a lot quicker at the moment to stitch than my Fairy Whispers because the confetti in that one is just oh, really, really heavy. Um, so I just need to get some solid days stitching in a week on this to progress with it a bit further. Um, now, before I go any further, I did have a question. I, I haven't got to all my comments on my last video, but I, I spotted a question um, by Hayley. Thank you very much, Hayley, for your question. Now, Hayley wanted to ask, um, with the diagonal parking, whether I still park in my columns. So the answer is yes. Um, I, I still stitch 10 stitches wide and either 10 stitches down or sometimes 20 down. If it's a confetti heavy area, I find it easier to go 20 down. That way you're not re-threading the needle quite as often. Um, now, as far as where I park my threads, you can see here in this one, that some threads are parked at the bottom. So as I'm working my way down and some threads are parked at the side. 
Now there is a reason why I do this and I'm gonna pull this one out. I don't think I've shown her yet. She's one of my finishes that was done prior to me coming back onto floss tube. So surprise, mini mermaid. All right, so I, I wanted to pull her out because this is the best way Haley, to show you. Now, if you look carefully, oh, there you go. You can see it really clearly there. You can see all these vertical lines. Now, she was stitched, um, 10 stitch. And, you know, I think the fabric has a lot to blame. This fabric has a lot of give in it, but it severely warped my fabric. Uh, I don't know if you can see very well. I think the video makes it look better than it actually is. But trust me, the fabric is very warped. And I wasn't happy with these columns that showed up. Now, how I think that has occurred is I have to show you the back. So back's messy, as you would expect with a parking project. But you can see very clearly on the back channels, which run 10 stitches across. 10 stitches, then a channel, 10 stitches, then a channel, 10 stitches, then a channel. That is caused by me stitching my blocks of 10 and parking purely underneath only. So you can imagine nothing is closing that gap. And that is what I believe has caused those ridges. So to combat that, I now park over to the side as well as underneath. In, in the hope of closing that gap. Now, when I back when I was stitching this and I was having an issue with this and I mentioned it, someone said, you can easily fix this by going across afterwards and just stitching, put some stitches through the back in those gaps. And I did try that and it did work, but I've done a lot. It's very time consuming. And to be honest, I probably will not frame this project because it was done for my house where I lived at the time. I no longer live there and I, yeah, I just can't see myself framing this one. So I don't want to waste time fixing something that probably won't go in a frame, which is sad. But so, yeah, as I was saying, the way I get around that is by parking some threads to the side, some threads to the bottom. And you can see in this design, there are no channels whatsoever. And if I show you the back... You can see there, again, there's no channels. So I hope that's answered your question, Hayley. Um, if not, if you want some more clarification, please um, make a comment on this video and let me know what else you'd like to know. But um, yeah, that's all I can think of um, saying about that right now is, but I do, I do plan on doing a diagonal parking tutorial I've been asked by a lot of you to do that. I just need to find some spare time because it's going to take a while um, to video that and to plan it all and to edit it. Um, so bear with me, but I, I will get that done and hopefully that will um, clarify things for you. Okay, um, so that one's done. Okay, so my next project to talk about is one I can't even show you. <laughs> um, it's my Mirabilia Roses of Provence. I'll put a picture up here of last time you saw her. Um, now, she was started back in 2016. Um, 1st of January, if I remember rightly. I, I do have all this written down somewhere, but I forgot to write it down for the video. Um, yeah, so she was my main focus this month. I had to get her finished so that she could get to the framers in time, so she could be a present for my mum's um, birthday and Mother's Day in May. Um, so I got her finished, yay, I'm so happy. But unfortunately, I can't show her to you right now because she's at the picture framers. I did take some photos and a video, so all going well, I'll put them in here so that you can see her in all her glory. So hopefully that worked. If you didn't see anything, it didn't work. Um, all right, so she was done again on 32 count um, Sprite Lugana from Picture This Plus, which is a, obviously iPhones change uh, the colors of things a lot. So it's a very soft lavender that I picked from her dress. So it coordinates really well. 
Um, she was stitched to two over two and the skin was done one over one. Um, I had a lot of issues in the last week or so uh, when I began beading this project. I did put my frustrations out on Instagram and a lot of you wonderful, wonderful people offered suggestions for different invisible thread brands to try as well as different needles, beading needles to try. So thank you to all those people that took the time to comment and make suggestions. I really appreciate that. Um, I ended up buying, the issue was, sorry for those of you that don't follow me on Instagram, was my beading needle that I've had for years and years and years and used for many projects. It was too big for some of the petite beads in this Mirabilia design. Um, so I had to go to my local Spotlight store and the beading needles they had there were incredibly thin. So perfect size, but they were very long. So like this long compared to my current one, which is like that long. And they were bendy. Like I couldn't believe it. They had no strength to them at all. I snapped one. I stabbed myself a million times with another one. I was just getting really angry and frustrated, um, as well as the invisible thread that I use. Is it, uh, what's the brand, Y YTL or something like that. Um, it just kept coming unknotted from the, the eye of the needle and I was just hating it. And I think, you know, I was under pressure knowing I had to get this finished. So um, I ended up finding another needle. I, I went through my drawer and I've got a pack of like these multi-purpose needles that suit all different things. And lo and behold, there was one in there. It was really short, but it did the job. And yeah, I was grateful for that. So got her done. She's now at the picture framers. Um, it's, the quote came back double what I budgeted. Like, I don't know about you guys overseas, but here in Australia, picture framing has become so expensive. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the drawer full of, well, drawers full of projects I have finished that there's no way I'll be able to afford to frame them all. So I might look into ordering um, custom frames. I know you can do that here in Australia. There's a site where you can order custom frames and um, mat boards and then you just frame it yourself. So I know how to lace. So um, yeah, I might do that. But this was a very special project. This was for my mum and she's worth the money so it's a beautiful frame that i've chosen and i just hope she looks as good as she does in my head so <laughs> when she um is finished i'll obviously give her to mum and then i'll borrow her back for next month's video and i will show her to you then and hopefully you'll think she's as beautiful as i do so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really proud of myself for finally finishing her, as I said, back in 2016. And um, yeah, she's been a long time waiting. So, and, but the beauty of it is mum never knew I started it. So she doesn't, she doesn't know. I will tell her, of course, but um, yeah, at least I haven't kept her waiting for six years, which would have been worse. I'm not someone that likes to do that. So, all right. Um, so obviously she was my very big finish for... Um, this year, number three. I think I, I didn't write it down in my notes, but I think she was number three finish. Uh, next on the list is Fairy Whispers by Heaven and Earth Designs, uh, Lisa Parker Design. And as you know, this thing is massive. And I made a joke, but I'm, I'm sort of like pretty serious. That this thing at the moment, with the parked threads. Feels like I'm working on, on a latch hook rug kit. Do you guys remember those from back in like the 80s? Because seriously, this parking is like a carpet. I don't want to play with it too much. I don't want to knot it, but it's just, oh, crazy. So I'm not going to pull the whole thing out again, but you can see I worked on this section. <laughs> it's not much <laughs> so what did I do three days of stitching 713 stitches in total but this is really slow going guys I can spend hours on this and literally only get about 300 stitches done because each 10 by 10 block 
has only got a couple of squares of each colour. Um, but I know, I know a lot of you would say, oh, I couldn't do that. Like, it would drive me crazy. But look at the effect. Like, it's, it's beautiful. It's going to take me forever, but it's beautiful and so worth it. And once I get over to these other sections, it won't be as bad. So it's not like it's like this for the whole thing. And I know some of you out there are doing confetti heavy projects by Heaven and Earth Designs and the whole thing is like that. So hats off to you guys. But I know you're with me. You just love it. So it's so all worth it. Yeah, so again, this is done on 18 Count Y Ada and is my biggest project to date. I hate to think how much this is going to cost to frame after getting the quote from Mums. Um, yeah, this is just going to need a loan from the bank, I think. <laughs> but it'll be worth it because how great will it look on the wall? And then I'll be addicted to the really, really big ones and want to do another really, really big one. And, you know, you can only put so many in your house, can't you? And you can't sell them because who's going to pay the money it's going to take for all that work? Just sad. All right. Uh, next on the list is Sleigh Ride at Dusk by Dimensions Gold. Put a picture up here for last time you saw it. Now, this one didn't get much um, work done on it in April because um, Roses of Province was my focal piece and I had to work on that on weekends to get it finished. So this one only got one weekend done on it. Uh, two days. That's okay. Still a long way before Christmas. And there it is. And this month I worked on the white path. The little person with the sled. A couple of snowmen and a couple of cardinals and the funny thing is after doing the snowman I was just like looking at the finished design so oh hang on this snowman's got a Christmas wreath in his arm so where's that on the chart and then I realized that's all done in French knots <laughs> so of course I'm doing all that at the end um, whether I do French knots or beading I don't know um, see what I feel like because I really don't like French knots but I may decide to do it on this one we'll see so now that I'm down to there I might try and even this up so work on this side this month and see how we go but this one's back into the weekend rotation so Saturdays and Sundays when I get chance to do both days some months I only get one day free on the weekends and uh, I've been working a lot on Saturdays so um we'll see we'll see how it goes um again this is done on eight, a 16 count gray ada that came with the kit it's quite stiff um but that will be good you know when it's time to put it all together um that's it for that one now next on my list is uh shannon christine designs fairy garden collection so again i'll put a picture up here for you and get this the right way around and this is where we're up to so this month I started and finished mushroom house how cute is that and I also started the border and guys like seriously how cute is that border it's so simple there's no back stitching they just you know it's just a few colors in there but it's so pretty so I might use that again somewhere else because that's just adorable. I love it. Um, again, there's no beads on this yet. So, you know, so for an example, there's beads that are supposed to go. Oh, it's hard to hold this. Uh, around the windows. So around each window there's beads and then uh, the doorknob has beads. So it'll look even more sparkly when they go on. Um, and I also, I did mention it in the last video, but I've swapped out the Krynik in these designs for Petite Treasure Braid, because I prefer that. And did I write down which one I'm doing? Nope. Got it here though. It's PB03. 
and I just find that really really easy to work with whereas chronic just does my head in but yeah really happy with this it's so pretty so next month I will um, do this one can't remember what it is but I'll put the finished picture up here so you guys will see it and then I will do the border as well and we'll just work my way down it's, it's so much fun again I just I love this fabric Jobelin I, I want to get some more I have to buy some more Jobelin and do some more projects on it because it's just so soft it's lovely Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that that was um, 28 count water lily. Water lily is the colour. Jobelin, uh, stitch two over two. I always forget to give you those details. All right, next on the list is my new start. All right, new start this month is another Shannon Christine Designs. This is her Christmas Club 2023. I did mention it in the last video. Um, for those of you that haven't watched that, so this one, you sign up to the Christmas Club and then the first of each month, she sends you a design. I think it's like $8 a chart. It'll be available to everyone now, but I think it was just cheaper for those of us that signed up early. So, um, again, I had to wait for this one. I couldn't start it straight away. Couldn't start it on the 1st of April because I was waiting for my fabric and threads to arrive from... 123 Stitch in America finally arrived. Um, I'll put a picture of the finished design up here so you can see what it will look like. And it's so cute. Now I want this to probably hang alongside or very close to my country, cod country cottage needleworks, Santa's Village, which was also done in the same fabric, which is why I chose 32 count opalescent Belfast linen I don't I've, I've untightened this which is what I do whenever I finish stitching for the night I um, release my tension which I heard you're supposed to do um, so I don't know if you can see yeah you can see a little bit the sparkle it's got a pretty sparkle to it now being as this design from Shannon Christine um, doesn't have any metallic in it or beading uh, anything like that I'm like, oh, I want a little bit of bling. Um, so I thought I'll get the bling in the fabric. So I haven't quite finished this yet. Um, this is a Weeks Dye Works. So the only DMC colour in here is the white, which is the B5200. And Stitch 2 over 2. And this is obviously the first design. This was April old-fashioned sleigh rides so I've still got a bit to go here um, the darker part of the green for the tree has got to finish the sled finish the white frame and then there's a red and white candy border that goes around each frame um, so today I got emailed the next frame for, for May um, so I can't start that yet because I need to finish this one so we'll see how we go I might just work on this. I might put the Christmas stocking away for the weekend and work on this if I don't get it finished in time so I can catch up. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay, so that's all the fun stitching out of the way. Now I've got some fun purchases that I want to show you because I actually want to excuse me, I want to try and incorporate these in, as new starts for the month of May. I don't know, I'm looking at uh, what, four, four new starts, no, three new starts, I'm just checking my calendar up there on the wall. Three new starts and bringing back an old whip to hopefully get that finished. So we'll see. Um, and I was lucky enough to purchase these off of a Facebook group. So the first one is Little House Needleworks My House, which I will obviously change to my surname. But I have to have that one as soon as I saw it. So cute. I'm sure I've got plenty of fabric um, to get that one done without having to buy any. 
So this one, I'm definitely going to start. I've put this down as starting in week two of May. Uh, next is uh, Plum Street Samplers Sewn in Friendship. A pin keep or a pin give? Now, believe it or not, this is my first Plum Street Samplers chart. And I like their stuff. I just have never had a chance to purchase it before. So looking forward to doing that one. Um, I want to get a nice basket to put my Biscorn news in. And then I think I'll stitch this up and, and put that in there as well. And this will be a great little travel project. Uh, this one's done, this chart calls for weeks dye works. But there's a DMC conversion. So I might just do it in DMC because this is something I think I'd like to wash. Um, I think Weeks Dye Works is colour fast now, but um, if any of you know that for sure, if you can maybe leave me a comment and let me know, because I think I read somewhere that they are, but I don't know. And the next one I bought, I just couldn't resist this little one. She was so cute. Now, I'm not going to pronounce the name because I'll mess it up. Look at her. She's so cute. So translated, it means the sorceress or the witch. Mm, I just really like her. I, it might be a bit optimistic of me to do this as a travel project because I think she's actually going to be um, quite big. Let me just double check the stitch size. Sorry, I should have got all this written down. She's 96 by 119, so yeah, she's a decent size. That's okay. It's okay to have something a bit bigger, but I think it'll be exciting to do a different travel project each Tuesday. They'll take longer to finish, obviously, but just keeps the interest alive. Then the next one I was really excited for, because I've wanted this one for a while. Um... And this lovely lady on Facebook was selling this kit. It's a, it's a butterfly fairy called Night. This is the matching day. This is by Lenart and the artist's name is Maria van Scharenberg. So this is my first Lenart and also my first Maria van Scharenberg. And she's just beautiful. And I'm, you know, I'm right into fairies and stuff now. So I had to have her. And it's the kit, comes with all the stuff. And then I put on Instagram, I showed this and I said, if anyone um, knows where I can find Day, please let me know. And then a couple of lovely people replied and said, you can buy both of them in a chart from Leisure Arts. I was, okay. <laughs> so I've now ordered the chart from Amazon. It's on its way. Um... Yeah, so I think I'll be doing that because otherwise, you know, I'm not going to be able to match up these thread colours exactly. And, you know, I'm someone that if there's a set, I want the set. I, I don't want to just do the one. I want to do both of them. They're, I can just imagine two of them up on the wall together would look so beautiful. So lovely. All right, and... That's not going to be a travel project, by the way. That's going to be, I don't know, I have to finish something else to squeeze that one in. Um, I don't know what, probably one of the, probably my fairy garden collection, because I've done three of those. There's still six to go. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, now this one I did pull out the other day. I'd forgotten about it. And this is an old whip of mine. Um, please forgive me. I didn't write down the details of when I started this. I had shared it on Instagram. It is from the World Cross Stitching book. This is issue 180. So it's that one. And it is called Simply Scissors. And it's a scissor keep, an antique looking scissor keep. So, this one's almost finished. Like, I can't believe this is, 
when I first got back into stitching after, you know, I'd spent a year or more doing diamond painting and baking and all sorts of other things, which is what I do. I, I venture from different crafts, you know, I don't always stick to cross stitching, but I do always return to cross stitching. It's my, it's my true love. Um, but this was my first project that I got out after quite a while of not stitching. So this is how much I got done. I'll pull it up closer so you can see. I like the delicate detail of it. Isn't it cute? And look at these little scissors. Where are they? The little scissors. The little French knots. Yep, I did the French knots on there. I like the colour choices. I love the little spools of colour. It's so cute. So obviously I just have this section to go and then I can finish it. So that's way too close for me to just put it back in the drawer. And I saw it, I oh, have to get that finished. Oh, I don't know if you saw this too. See the little thimbles? And it says stitcher underneath the thimble. So cute. So um, Joe Critchley, I don't think I mentioned her name before. Joe Critch Critchley is the designer of that one. So um, it looks pretty easy to put together. Just have to put some backing fabric on it and sew it all up together. So uh, that should be fun. All right. Now I did mention, that's everything I've got to show you. I did mention right at the beginning that, I sorry, I'm, I look a mess. I've, it's been a long day. I got some really exciting news to tell you. So I mentioned um, a couple of videos back about wanting to go to a cross stitch retreat, how it's always been my dream. And back in 2016, I was supposed to go to the Aussie Stitches Mirabilia retreat in New South Wales um, with Nora Corbett being there and my good friend, Claire, Pyrex Stitches. Hi, Claire. Um, she went along and obviously things in my life just crashed at that time. So I wasn't able to go and I was so devastated. I had paid my deposit, which was non-refundable and yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, Ronnie, uh, thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie left me a message on my last video. Is it the last video? Or well, the one before? I can't remember. Time's just flying by. Um, inviting me to the next Aussie Mirabilia retreat in Brisbane. And guess what? I'm going. I'm so excited. I'm going to get to meet Nora Corbett. Um, so it's on in February next year. So I've paid my deposit. I've booked my accommodation. I have not booked my flights yet because I was waiting for my work to approve, approve my annual leave, which they've now done, so I can do that. Um, my brother lives in Rainbow Beach, which is about five hours from Brisbane, so I'm and it's close to his birthday, so I'm going to go and see him as well while I'm there and make a nice holiday of it. But I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to be going to my first retreat. Um, I've got a lot of questions from people what to pack. Um, obviously, I've, I'm going on a plane. I don't know how I'm going to go. I, I don't stitch in hand. I stitch in a frame, um, which is quite heavy. So I don't know if you guys got any tips and advice for me. Um, be greatly appreciated. My partner said he'd be willing to make me something, some sort of a stand. I can sit my frame on at the table. Also, my magnifying lamp that I've got up here is really heavy, so I might have to look at getting something else. So there's a lot to think about, um, but I don't care. I'm, yeah, I'm just so excited. I also won't be taking my um, Mirabilia Roses of Provence with me because she will be framed and she'll be very heavy. So unfortunately, I won't be able to enter her into any framing framed mirabilia competitions which is a shame um, but I will take my mermaid of Atlantis that still is not framed 
it's tucked away in a drawer and she was my first mirabilia so i will take her along and who knows um and get to show her off that'll be nice and yeah i just i don't know i i really hope some of you that watch my channel are going or planning on going um i would really love love to meet um some fellow stitchers and you know have a chat and it would just be so fantastic so if you are planning on going um please let me know love to you know meet up i'm i know i do these videos but i'm a very shy person um when i'm around people that i don't know until i come out of my shell and then then i'm not so shy but i'm just generally a very shy person so um yeah <laughs> we'll see how we go but i am super super duper excited and nothing better happen this time to stop me from going because i will be doubly devastated so happy thoughts it's gonna happen um so thank you again ronnie for uh, ronnie's the event organizer one of the event organizers um that invited me along to that uh, i will put some a uh, link down below if any of you are interested in some more information on that um ronnie will be able to help you out but i'll put a link to the facebook group where um they have the information on that and you can contact her i really hope some of you will seriously consider going maybe some of you already live in queensland and it's nice and close for you so we'll see all right i think that's it for me for this video it's gone on a little bit longer than i thought it was going to i will get this uploaded tonight for you all thank you for listening to me ramble along especially my exciting news um and I hope you all have a wonderful month of May. Thank you again for all of you that watch and comment on my videos. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for subscribing, especially, you know, it's, it really means a lot to me. So um, have a great stitching month, everyone. And I will see you all again very soon. Can't wait to show you the framed mirabilia. Okay, bye.